Morris, Co Morris Sussex Sports coverage of Morris County Championship Week. And it's the second half of our doubleheader here at Roxbury High School in Suckasunder, New Jersey. This time it's the boys' turn to take the field as the number 11 seeded Randolph Rams taking on the number one seed, the Del Barton Green Wave. David Hassagan here with you along with Sean Brethrick after a thrilling extra time winner for Chatham in the girls final just about half an hour ago. We now see, well, on paper, in terms of the rankings, the underdog of Randolph, the number 11 seed, we'll say how that's a misnomer in a moment, taking on the traditional powerhouse of Morris County soccer, that is Del Barton, in what could be a very interesting clash. And if it's anything we saw from the first game, don't base it on the records, don't base it on the results. Right. It's a final, anything can happen. Anything can happen. And, you know, listen, Del Barton, uh, in most athletics, and honestly, should always be a powerhouse, at least in this county. True. Um, they have the best facilities. Uh, I've, I've been there. It's a beautiful, beautiful place that they got over there. We're going to. Um, so, you know, it's, it's, no, it's no wonder why they, uh, they are, they're always in this spot. But Randolph has something to prove here. They, they, want, they want that championship. And if they were watching what just happened here moments ago with Chatham taking on a team that was dominating play, and all it took was a hot, was a good goalkeeper to keep them in the game and just stall and stall and stall for some more time, and they finally got the chance that they need. And it certainly is, as we're getting ready here to go live between Del Barton and Randolph. Got some friends here, eh? Little, little former friends from Moore's Elite here. There you go. Scouting some talent, I'm sure, and or supporting some of our some of their players. But we talk about Randolph again, they're the 11 seed. And when you right. see an 11 seed in the final, usually when you see that, you're like, okay, wow, they made an incredible run. That's not the case with Randolph. They are far better than their ranking. And again, this tournament starts so early. Right. Randolph started this year off two and four. Okay. They started off slow. They didn't really have the right adjustments. They had to make some adjustments, Coach Moose has said, in the pregame. But since then, they've only lost twice. Wow. Since that two and four start, they've made an incredible run through this tournament. They've been actually pretty comfortable for the most part and then knocked off the number two seed Mount Olive in the semis, two to one. This is a team that is much better than their ranking. But as you said, there could be a bit of an uphill battle for them here against Del Barton. This is a Del Barton team that has already played them twice this season. The Green Wave getting a three nothing and four nothing win in the two times they played them. In fact, one of the losses from that after that two and four start were to this Green Wave team. Again, you know, you go in there, you go in, you're, you're going in here, you just watch what just happened. You watch what just happened with Chatham. Yeah. With the Chatham girls beating a team that was dominating play and possession. Yes. You know that it is possible and you got to be inspired by exactly what you just saw. Knowing that all you need to do is play good enough tight defense Get yourself a chance. Give yourself. Give have your goalkeeper give yourself a chance, and get in there. And if it means that you have to take it to extras in the goal and, and hit the golden goal, so be it. But honestly, it's a you know it'll be interesting to see what Randolph can do, and if they can. I mean, Del Barton. This could be a situation where Del Barton is really just that good. We'll have to see. There's one thing, though, about the teams in this county. Whenever Del Barton appears on your schedule, there's always that little extra motivation to beat the private school team as the public school team. As, yes. As someone who yes. competed in this county for Parsippany Hills, my alma mater, and granted, it was in golf. Yes, make all the jokes you want in the, in the chat, but you have that extra little bit of motivation, and especially you've lost to this team twice. You've improved so much from the early part of the season when you lost them 3 nothing. Yep. You go on this great run, you lose them again. But now you get a third shot. And we kind of remember, if we think about last year's hockey playoffs, what happened between Mars Knowles and Marstown Baird <laughs> in that in that Men's <laughs> Cup final? <laughs> you going to bring that back? You want to bring that one back up two, to me? Two, two games where the underdog lost both games. On paper, the game shouldn't matter. And it turns out to be incredibly even a great back-and-forth battle, and you have no idea what's going to happen here as they go through the rosters here. 
And again, we will break down the starting 11s as well once we get this match underway. And, and to piggyback off what you were saying, I, I played it in Hunterdon County football. We, Hunterdon Central played, we would play our schedule out and, you know, we would end up doing pretty good. We may, maybe we'll drop a game maybe. And then near the final game every year, it was a back hill auto. Right. Every year. And every year, they'd get us. Right. And it was always, and next year, next year, we'd say, we got to get these guys. It is that important. Now, fortunately, I was playing the four years that I, or, well, I, I only played a year and a half. But in, in any case, those year and a half that I played, I've had to play against Theo Riddick on the other side. So True. Let's go to the National Anthem. played the fans ready to go here in Sakasana at the home of Roxbury High School let's take a look at the starting 11s first for the Randolph Rams Andrew Levy the goalkeeper number 99 gets the start a 3-5-2 formation Connor Rodriguez number 21 number 12 Chris Zeris and number two Hunter Rodriguez for the back three in the midfield Anthony Cacciacarni, number five. Number seven, Kevin Martinez. Number eight, Luke Traverso. Number 11, Ignaz, uh, number 10, excuse me, Ethan Kim. And number 14, Elias Zaris. And up top, the pairing of Ignacio Martinez, number 11, and number 19, Ricardo Sanchez. On the opposite side for Del Barton, in goal will be number one, Parker Smith, the junior. On defense, Luca Touche, number five. Number 12, Co Kevin Cole, as well as number 23, Colin Say. And number 28, Aiden Donovan. A 4-3-3, by the way, for Del Barton. In the midfield, Fernando Bahana will be in there, number seven, along with Rory McAloo, number 15, and number 19, Andrew Tremonte. And up top, the dangerous front three of Aiden Grant, number nine, Number 10, Ryan Donovan, as well as number 24, Shea Coughlin. Not the first time that I've seen this Del Barton Green Wave team play. Well, this is often a team that you don't forget after you see them play. Unfortunately, th I play, I saw them play, who was it, Sh Chaminade? Chaminade, yes. Chaminade uh, in that four. I wish I was there the next day when they played St. Benedict's. That was I, would, I couldn't imagine how good that game was. St. Benedict's one of two blemishes on the record. Yeah, I figured as much. St. Ben Benedict, Benedict's. St. Benedict's. St. Benedict as as much as really good. You, you said you, we have the roster here from Del Barton that uh, Coach Donovan was so thankful to get this. And, and the bottom right. of, the, of this sheet, it shows the championships, both state, county, and conference. I like that. Here's the thing for the state championships on there, which there's about a dozen. Double that plus a few for St. Benedict's. I believe it's 30 or 31 that's, of the last 32 or 33. That's, that's how good that team that's is. That's incredible. But this is a Dell Barton squad that is certainly not slouch. A couple of D1 commits on this team. We'll mention them as we go along. A couple players out for Dell Barton, by the way. Andrew Cassiano, number 27, the sophomore, who's had a good year. A goal of three assists. He is out. Uh, with a broken leg, unfortunately. Also out, number 17, Nate Zimmerman, who just had surgery on his ankle, the junior in the midfield, who's also had a very good year. Five goals, three assists, actually just committed 
to play for the Fighting Irish of Notre Dame. So congratulations to him, but unfortunately, he will be watching from the bench here tonight. Well, he'll be there. He'll be there in a big supporting spot. Yes. You know, we mentioned the name. Andrew, is it Levi or Levy? Levy. Levy. So Andrew Levy. Again, you watch what happened in the game before. Andrew Levy, the, the, the role needs to go now on to you. Can you keep the, the ball out of the net and stall enough time to give your guys a chance to squeak one out yep. and keep it low? If, they, if the game can stay low scoring, Randolph has a shot, but they have to somehow keep the ball out of their net. And that's as much, though, on that back three which I have a feeling we'll see can't convert to a back five at times. That's the nice thing about the 3-5-2. You can drop those outside midfielders back as outside wing backs. So I have a feeling you might see a back five a lot of the time for Randolph, but if that back three or five can play well in front of their goalkeeper, Andrew Levy, it will be a big chance for them. But it's an early momentum here for Del Bartons. We're underway here in the boys' final. And again, we want to thank our sponsors, our presenting sponsors for the county championships here on Morris Sussex Sports. As the long throw goes into the edge of the box, a chance for Del Barton early, but Randolph collects. Good student section from Randolph, by the way, to our right. Del Barton no, down to our left. Randolph traveling well. Randolph, Randolph always comes with big support. And not too far of a trip for them either. Yeah, it's either here or in the chat, or either here or in the, in the YouTube chat room. Absolutely. <laughs> They're always active. And we, again, we want to thank our sponsors as Del Barton comes in on the attack here. And Levy will collect. We want to thank Jag One Physical Therapy, Morris County's award, most awarded physical therapy provider. Jag One Physical Therapy is proud to support our local community with locations in Morristown, Chatham, Cedar Knolls, Denville, and Sterling. And for more information or to schedule an appointment, go to jag1pt.com. We also want to thank George J. Keller and Sons, Northern New Jersey's premier home Improvements contractor, oh. specializing in roofs, siding, windows, and solar. They've been installing roofs and instilling trust since 1980. Let us show you how we can use our years of experience to your benefit in your next projects. Visit them at gjkeller.com. And again, we thank them for their support as well as we want to thank Roxbury High School as well and their entire staff here. That is wonderful football facility that they have here. Beautiful press box here, divided up. It feels like I'm at a small D1 college. This is fantastic up here. And it's heated, which is a godsend right now, folks, because it is chilly out there right now. It is cold. I'll do a game in November here. This is one of those nights where you want one of those nice, long, poofy jackets that, you, that you, Arson Finger used to wear for Arsenal. You know, that nice, long, warm winter coat. I'll have to look up a picture of that. Oh, and, and there's there's quite a few gifts and memes that go with it. So oh, really? You, you, okay. will be, you will be entertained. As things have gone on here, settling into the midfield. And you can hear the Randolph faithful to your right. Again, a huge crowd of support for them. As Del Barton tries to work their way up, and that no is way. a foul. Oh, wow. Committed by number seven, Fernando Bahana. Mm. Drawing that with number 11, Ignacio Martinez. Good job by Martinez. And he got, he got his foot stepped on there. Okay. I'll, I'll take your word for it. Didn't look like that to me, but if you're, you're, you've had the, you got the experience. <laughs> you've seen it. Who's the soccer guy here? Well, I'm just saying, he got, he got up awfully quick afterwards. Oh, it doesn't, just because it's get, you get fouled doesn't mean it hurts every time. Please. Fair enough. Here goes Del Barton now off the counterattack, trying to work their way forward. Intercepted nicely by the captain, Anthony Kachikarni. And now moving forward with it is number 19, Ricardo Sanchez, with a fancy footwork, but collected nicely with, with, by Parker Smith. With this supporting crew over here to our right, and plays like that, Randolph's got a shot. If they can just, if they can keep it going, Del Barton though, Del Barton could probably, if they enforce their will, they could probably shut it down in a snap if they wanted to. It's the amazing thing about soccer that one goal can turn a crowd from raucous to silent in a moment. But right at this point, again, a good crowd supporting Del Barton down to our left as they go over the top here, looking there for. Aiden Grant, 
but not quite there. Collected by Ignacio Martinez, Iggy as he's known sure. by his teammates and the coaching staff. Sends it back. Catch a Carney will send it forward, but it goes all the way through. Collected by Del Barton's number 15, Rory McAloon. Goes wide. This is Colin Say. Say tries to lay it inside, takes a deflection. Big save! Andrew Levy. Oh, man. First test of the night, and he gets up and stands up to it. We got to see this. So there's the setup. Little deflected pass here too. Here, the beautiful through ball, right to about the ten, and then the th then then the it comes in so quick, and Levy makes the play. That's exactly that's the kind of stuff you want to see. If you're Randolph, you want to see your guy making saves like that. And that was a great shot by I believe that was Andrew Tremantle, Tremanti, I should say, outside of his boot and right, great save down to his left by Levy. And, and Levy Levy's already starting. Levy's already starting early. Yes, it is. And Make he's going to need to play. He's going to have to have the game like that tonight. Yes, yes. In order to keep his team at least in it. As you said, if it stays low scoring, you give Randolph every shot here. This is a low Rand scoring as in you can't give up any more than a goal. This is a Randolph team that is, they started actually in the first round, did not get a bye. They were at the number 11 seed. First round was an easy win over the number 22 seed, Butler. They won that game 7-1. to one. Against who, I'm sorry? Butler. Where are they at? North Northern Morris County. Oh, okay. The Northern Borders. I'm sorry. I, it's not familiar. <laughs> the geography challenged. My apologies. <laughs> Sean Brotherick to our left. <laughs> that's a free kick for Del Barton. Second round for Randolph, it was a 2 nothing win over the number six seed, Montville. And then it was a 2 nothing win in the quarters against the number 14 seeded, Mendham. And then in the semifinals on the 17th, an upset win over the number two seed, Mount Olive, 2-1. to one. A shocking result for anyone that was... Has followed this year. Mount Olive has a very good team. So the free kick is sent into the oh. box. It's way back there. Well defended, though, by Chatham, or by Randolph, excuse me. Same jerseys, different school. What a kick by McAloon. Oh, my gosh. That, that was almost, that was picture perfect. Great ball to the back post. I, but I, I thought that was going to find a head for sure. It certainly was hoping that Great way. Great chance they get, he gives his guy. Again, it's like the goalkeepers, right? Yep. Keep your chance. Give your guy, give your guys a chance with that set piece. And they did. And there you see now what Randolph is going to do defensively. Uh. They've got that back five. And what you're going to see here, you're seeing this from them, is their outside back, their wing backs will pressure on the outside. When they do that, you'll see the defensive midfielder and catch a carney drop back. Is that shot for the near post? It's a goal kick. Or is it? No, it's a corner. Dave, first, first I don't corner. know if you saw, but watch this. Here he goes. It's kind of in our blind spot over here to our right. Uh, first off, he shakes him off. Watch number nine coming in. He near, oh, he goes he goes full header. dive header, and then that. And that is another chance. Sitting there, number ten Donovan, taken down, shoved. No oh. call for the referee. The finals game. Let the boys play. You gotta let them play. That was a great cross, by the way, on that chance from Colin Say, number 23. This atmosphere, you, you gotta let it go. Yep, and Aiden Grant there, we talked about the D1 commits, he is one of them. Committed to Bucknell for next fall, the senior. Give them uh, an HE double hockey sticks, Bucknell? That's maybe. The That's the thing. Yeah, maybe. <laughs> uh, the other commit as well for this team for Del Barton is number 10, Ryan Donovan. He's the coach's son, but he has earned his spot. He's committed to Holy Cross in the Patriot League for next seasons. And this is kind of typical. That's a nice touch there from Aiden Grant as he gets fought off as the captains go at it there. Well done, though, by Katja Carney. Oh, this is going to be a fun game. <laughs> I can already tell this is going to be a fun game. There's going to be, again, there's one thing that Randolph will not lack they will not lack a belief. They will not lack in grit. Nicely done there by number 19, Ricardo Sanchez. Oh, good read. As he picks the pocket. Good battle in the midfield there. That's Fernando Bahana who Col wins the ball back. Kevin Cole, beautiful read there. Del Randolph was about to get something going with a big through ball, I think, on the near side over here. And Cole just put the kibosh on it right away. He says nay, and we play on. Correct. Coming forward now, this is number 19, Andrew Tremonte. 
Nice little wow. dummy by Shea Coughlin. And they go wide. Del Barton very much in the ascendancy here. Bahana sends in the cross, looking to find Ryan Donovan, but headed clear, nicely done by Randolph, and they try to counter. Trying to poke it free as the crowd is could living and dying. Could you imagine if, these, if they get a break? Imagine if they get a goal. <gasps> oh, and that's a good slide challenge. That was even. And it will be Del Barton ball, though. Whoa. Good slide tackle by Ricardo Sanchez, and the thousands of, the hundreds Ooh. of referees to our right do not agree with that one. But again, as we said in the first game, it's the men and women in highlighter yellow or green that their opinion matters. Yeah, indeed. This is going to be a raucous atmosphere in here, though, with these two schools. As the pass goes back to Luca Touche, number five. One of the best names we've we've heard here on Morse Sports this season. Cross comes in for Grant. A header, though, to nobody on the near post. And it will be out for a goal kick. About 10 minutes into this final, no score between Del Barton and Randolph. We talked about Randolph's path to, in this tournament. Let's talk about Del Barton's quickly. They had a bye in the first round, being the number one seed. The second round it was a 2-1 win. Actually, that was their toughest match of the entire tournament. It was a 2-1 win over Hanover Park, the number 16 seed. Semi in the quarterfinals, it was a much more comfortable 4-0 win over the nine seed Morris Hills before taking down our hosts this evening, Roxbury, the Gales, the number four seed, a 2-0 win in the semifinals. Big players in the tournament, Ryan Donovan with three goals and an assist. We've seen a couple of different goaltenders for them. We didn't know who we were going to see today. We've seen both Parker Smith and number 30, Taylor Hunt, getting some time in between the pipes in this tournament. But it is the junior, Parker Smith, who gets the nod. And he has quite the athleticism. We saw him in warm-ups. Yeah. Has made some incredible saves. And again, this is another part of the what we saw in the first game. If your team dominates, the goalkeeper can go cold. If the goalkeeper goes cold, you have to make sure he's ready for those moments where he has to step up. Because you know Randolph, the way they've played coming into this game in their recent form, they're going to have some chances. They're going to have a couple where they're going to have a chance to score. It's going to be up to Smith to be rock steady, as that's a nice defensive play, and potentially a counterattack here from Randolph. Nice back heel pass. Long ball over the top. Looking for the speedy number seven. That's Kevin Martinez. But it was defended well. And Randolph now looking to control the game. Slow it down. Connor Rodriguez looks for a pass. It misses everyone. As we go forward here. Down the left-hand side of the field. Good ball forward. Bahana sends in a cross. He's got a couple players there, but it avoids all of them. Ends up now with Tremonte. Sends it in. Cleared, though, at the edge of the 18. And Randolph can breathe a little bit easier. And again, this is this is the time of the game, though, where you're looking for the footwork. They had a few showers earlier in the day that affected the girls' final slightly here at Roxbury. Oh, but it's been basically has stopped here, the precipitation here in northern New Jersey for this boys' final tonight. But every turf is different. It's not your home turf especially. It takes a little bit of time to acclimate yourself. And that's the time if you're going to slip, it's going to happen in those first few minutes. Looks like both teams have gotten away with it here as they lay it off to Ryan Donovan. Now going down the wing and intercepted nicely by Randolph. And a, couple, a quick substitution here for Del Barton. So many weapons for this Green Wave team. Balance scoring across the entire roster. You say the same for this Randolph team as well, though. They've got quite a few weapons. 
as the shot comes in. And an easy save for Levy. Another pair of juniors facing off for the goalkeepers here. And what has been a chilly night, and this is this is the night you don't want to be slide tackled, I can tell you that. And actually, the only thing that might be worse than a slide tackle in this temperatures is getting kicked in the shin. Mm. Yes, you have a shin pad. That doesn't mean it helps completely. As the one, two, little miscommunication there after a nice little dribble from Kevin Martinez. If, if, if that's how this is, how this, how the bleachers are gonna shake, I don't even wanna know what's gonna happen when they get a break. There's a sh cross comes in, nicely caught there by Parker Smith. And that's the first real attempt in the final third for the Rams. Del Barton looking to counter. And again, as much as we've praised Del Barton, Randolph traditionally one of the best public schools in the county. You often see them near the end of this tournament. They send it forward and controlled by Ricardo Sanchez. Lays it back to number 12, that's Chris Zeris. Goes wide, trying to go down the right hand side. Nothing there though, as they send it forward for Aiden Grant, but cleared downfield and here comes the turf, the bounce, but well defended, nicely done. By number 15, McAloon heads it back to the keeper to control. Randolph now though in the ascendancy a little bit. Ethan Kim, number 10, on the ball. Tries to get it across field, but he was collapsed upon by three Green Wave players. As the battle goes out to the far side. Kevin Cull playing in that defensive midfielder role. They get a 4-3-3 formation for Del Barton. It's almost a 4-1-2-3, the way they're playing it here. Kevin Cull just sitting back, relaxing in the midfield. Plays a lot like what Sean Davis does for the New York Red Bulls. Just kind of sits in front of that back four, lets the rest of the midfielders work in on it. I knew you were going to bring up the Red Bulls. It's a shot from range. It's almost spilled by Le Levy, but attends to it nicely. And another moment, another save for the junior goalkeeper. It's a long range shot on this one. Yep, Waits just has all the room in the world. And yeah, got to go down there and get it. And again, it's just about being confident in net. That's the number one thing. We saw that in the last game in the girls' final with Kate Hackett for Chatham. Yep. Complete confidence inside her own penalty area. If you can have that as a goalkeeper, that's part of the, of the equation done. That's a, that's a big part of the equation that yep. you don't have to worry about as a coach. As a change, it appears for Randolph, or maybe just getting rid of something there for Ignacio Martinez. He's back on the field quickly. Del Barton just leading that press. Number 18, Joshua Jennings out there. That was the early sub for Del Barton. He's out in the midfield at the moment. But here comes the Rams trying to break down their right-hand side, but well defended. The constant pressure by the Rams is, is impressive, but how long can they keep it up for? That's going to, be, going to be the key in this one. And again, these two teams have already played each other twice. Del Barton earning a multi-goal shutout both times, 3-0 and 4-0. But again, for whatever reason, the tournament brings out something different. There's always something odd that will go down in these finals. There's a phrase that goes along with the DFB Pokal, the German Cup. Mm. And that phrase, when it's translated in English, is the cup has its own rules. Right. And you could say that with the Mars County Tournament as Del Barton tries to Move in on the attack. That was Colin Shea Coughlin, but it's launched clear. Not quite clear enough, as here comes Randolph and nearly <laughs> some miscommunication. <laughs> and again, some. If, if these guys get a break and they get, and the ball ends up in the back of the Del Barton net, I don't think we're going to have 
We're not going to have a clear picture on our camera for, for a few minutes. It's going to be shaky Cloverfield style. Pretty much. I mean, and I will say this, the Del Barton crowd, it is much smaller to our left than it is to our right, but Del Barton brings the noise as well. As anyone who's ever been to the, their home field will tell you. Especially for baseball. As Randolph takes it back, lays it off into the midfield. A little bit of contact there. A shot from range. Oh, my goodness. Nearly a worldy from the number 10, Ethan Kim. Decided, you know what? I'm just going to shoot. You're going to give me room. And this didn't miss by much. Where is it? They gave him all the space. Here he comes. One touch. He says, okay. Riser. Whoa. He, went, he was going upper 90 on that one, Dave. That he was, was trying. It looked like, it looked like Parker Smith might have had that covered. But that was a rocket from twenty from from thirty five yards. If if that ball goes in the net, it, we're feeling vibrations up here. I mean, let's be honest though. What did we see in the first game? The exact same thing, just not in the run of play. From Paige Droner, as we said, I said it to mention to the both coaches, and they agreed thoroughly. There's going to be a lot of expectation to live up to after that final in the girls' side. That pre was previous to this game. Both of these teams were in the stands or warming up on the side as that game came to a close. And both coaches agreed. <laughs> they set up. They have quite the act to follow. Here comes Randolph. Trying to go down the right-hand side. Good defense again. Well done by number 14. Or Sorry, that's not number 14. My apologies. Good defense on the outside there for Del Barton. I'll tell you what, this pressure is helping Randolph right now. You know, they're getting possession, opportunities. And it's, it's not a full press either. You're right. only seeing two or three players press at a time. They're being opportunistic with when they push. Because, again, that's, that's part of the thing with running a high press. It is very effective. That's a great cross of the oh. field. But intercepted nicely. This is Kevin Martinez. Oh. But intercepted again by Del Barton. McAloon, beautifully done. McAloon being the backline general. <laughs> but as I was saying, with when you run that kind of high pressure, you cannot run it for an entire match. It's just not possible. At a certain point, you're going to get exhausted and just make a ton of, or just make a ton of mistakes. You have that occasional pressure, though, the opportunistic pressure, two or right. three players. Right. That's all you need in order to make it effective. And if as long as it's the right moment, you pick a pocket, you get a two-on-one the other direction, guess what? That's good enough. So Del Barton gets it back. Colin Say, he's looked very impressive. The outside back. Lays an overlap. <laughs> they go forward here. I apologize, there is a, there is a player wearing number 14 for Del Barton. However, there is no number 14 on the roster we were given, so we apologize for not being able to say that player's name. If anybody knows it in the comments, serious answers only, <laughs> please let us know. But as they go forward here, Del Barton, calm and collected. McAloon seems to be that single holding center back that's not going anywhere for this Del Barton back line. It's everybody points that it's their throw in and it will give it to Del Barton. <laughs> what? I don't know what the chant was from Randolph, but <laughs> they're, they're having fun and so are we here. David Hazing with Sean Brethren as we are at the 7.15 mark of this first half, still scoreless in this Morris County boys final between Del Barton and Randolph. Del Barton collects a shot blocked nicely there by the Rams. As they look to go on a break. They will get a chance here down the sideline. If they can keep it in, they can't. Kevin Martinez just couldn't quite keep it in there as Del Barton collects. Tapped away. Nice slide tackle there by Martinez. Will play a majority of his time on the left-hand side. Long throw coming from Del Barton. Into the edge of the area. Cleared away, but kept in nicely by number 10, Ryan Donovan. 
trying to turn it, but well defended. And Randolph will no go the other way. Lays it off inside. As they look for the overlap down the right this time. But well defended by number five. That's Luca Touche. Well done on the left. This Randolph team truly believes that they can win this game. Absolutely. You and can that's, tell by it. You can tell. The body language is there. The effort's 100% there. They just need the one look. Estelle Barton collects on the outside. Trying to lay it through was number 19, Tremonte, but well defended there. By number 21, Connor Rodriguez. A couple substitutions here. Change up front to Randolph. Number 49, Eddie Wismerski is coming on. Looked like there was a change for Del Barton as well. As the captain, Ryan Donovan, will take a breather. Top of the 18. No fouls as the referee tells the Del Barton forward to get up. <laughs> And that draws some jeers from the Randolph crowd and some pondering, at least, from the Del Barton side. As Randolph comes the other direction through Martinez. Kevin Martinez tries to switch the field, but intercepted well. Not fully dealt with, though, by Del Barton. Collins Say battling there. Say holds nicely, but will get it right back at his feet as Wismerski was all over him. Fresh legs of Wismerski. And that is Del Barton ball. <laughs> it seems like every decision, no matter which way it goes, being booed by somebody here. But again, that's the official's job to call it down the middle. And they don't care about your feelings. But again, we want to thank the officials for, again, always being there. Shortage of officials now. In, youth and high school sports. But we appreciate them for what they do. It's in the major sports, as you would call it. Not, not, I think you're at soccer, I think. Uh, it's, it's, it's there too, sir, unfortunately. Just remember, folks, these are all people that are doing it for, A, for the love of what they want to do. And so far, no controversy in this game, nor in the first one. Most of the time, they get it right. As much as a diehard fan as I am, I hate to say that, they do. Anyway, long throw from Del Barton. Head to the area, headed away. A shot from range, but it's over the top. A decent look from the number seven. That was Bahana, but over the bar and over the uprights. Not sure if it was between the goalposts there. No, not sure if it counts as three points or not. Well, fictional three points, maybe. <laughs> so Levy will get it back into play. Immediately, though, having to deal with it, and nicely done was Kachakarni. He was under pressure from Aiden Grant. And now Randolph through his Mursky. Trying to get some help, but too much pressure from Dale Barton, and they'll come the other way. Sliding challenge, and I believe it's just a throw in. I don't think that was an actual foul. So I have a question for you. Have you seen Joshua Jennings yet out there? Josh Win Jennings. Has he uh, has he played out there yet? He may be number 40. If I remember correctly. Potentially. I'm not sure. Actually, might. I might have seen Josh Win Jennings as number 18, I believe. Well, that's his not that's his usual number, but potentially. I thought that he kind of looked like Josh Win Jennings, or at least from what I remember. Well, we'll find out, and hopefully we'll have clarification on that at halftime. Yeah, at halftime. Again, we apparently apologize for that. But when a number is not on the roster and appears on the field, there is a bit of befuddlement between the broadcasters. I'm, here, I'm, here, I'm, here, I'm hearing or seeing some Maxwell's being thrown around in the chat. There's no Maxwell. <laughs> well, again, we'll see what happens, but so far, scoreless. No goals to report. Great takedown there That's from Grant. Looked like he got taken down from behind, but no call. Nice move by Say. He takes a long-range effort, but it's a skidding one. And Levy covers. 11.45 left in this first half. Scoreless between Del Barton, the number one seed, and the number 11 Randolph Rams. And again, we want to thank our sponsors here at Championship Weekend. 
as Del Barton comes through. We might have to hold on to the sponsor for a second. Nope, it'll be a throw in for Randolph. I want to thank Jag One Physical Therapy, which proudly serves as the preferred in-network provider of physical therapy, hand therapy, and athletic training services. They were recently included in the Incorp 5000 list as one of the nation's fastest growing private companies. Congratulations to them. Jag One Physical Therapy is drive is driven by a care-first model of physical therapy resulting in the best outcomes for our patients. Learn one at learn more at jag1pt.com. We also want to thank George J. Keller and Sons, established in 1980, in Northern New Jersey's premier home improvements contractor, especially in roofs, siding, windows, and solar. Let them show you how they can use their user experience to benefit your next project by going to gjkeller.com. It's about the 10 minute mark. And again, this is why the games aren't done on paper, Sean. No, yeah. An incredible first half. It's really been pretty even between the two. Del Barton's had a few more chances. They've had their only real shots on net outside of the absolute blast from Ethan Kim. But other than that, it's been pretty even, a pretty good battle so far. Yeah, absolutely. It's, it's been exactly what you expect from Randolph. They could have come out here with high energy. Now it's. Now it's up to Del Barton to shut that energy down, but they haven't been able to do that yet. And again, as you mentioned, it's about keeping that energy for the entire 80 minutes. Now, the, the, the longer that they, the longer that they stay in this game with Del Barton, the more confidence that Randolph's going to get. You're noticing though, it's a little less of that press right now from Randolph as it's hefted forward and well controlled by number 19, Ricardo Sanchez. But again, he's just. A one-man machine right now, just going from player to player, trying to get an interception, and now he backs off. Del Barton will regroup. And Coach David Donovan, this is a Green Wave team that is, again, a perennial power. Many times over state and county champions. They won the 27, 27, 2017, 2018, and 2019 additions of the Morris County Championships. Again, no championships at the state level last year due to the pandemic. Their last state title came in, coming in 2017. Again, on the opposite side from St. Benedict's, obviously. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, St. Benedict's. Yeah, I mean, it, there's a... They're in a different universe. It's different. It's just different, folks. If you know, you know. But... This is a Del Barton squad that is respected. It's also a team that very much has a giant target every year on their backs. In this county, for sure. Remember last year, I believe, with our friend, mutual friend Brett Luther calling Del Barton versus Montville. And Montville pulling off the win at Del Barton. You would think they had just won the World Cup. It meant that much to the Mustangs. As that's all deep ball back post cross nobody there still there though for Del Barton still holding on down by the corner flag and it'll be a corner kick for the green wave as the substitutions will come on here for both teams ah there goes John Del ah yes again we will get his name appropriately folks we apologize for that it's got to be somebody on the roster we would hope so <laughs> it's somebody on the roster with a different number cross comes in from the near side back of the edge of the area nobody there and out of bounds for a throw in seems like he's a midfield he's definitely a mid in the midfield the question is who have you said andrew tremonte yet yep yes. tremonte's out there as here comes del barton again with numbers, shot, goal! There's the opener! And it's the captain, number 10, Ryan Donovan. The future Holy Cross Crusader has put the green wave up top and the student section to the left going absolutely crazy. Oh, what a goal. All him, just dribble, dribble in the zone, in the area, and just a beautiful right final finish to get one by the keeper. That's just world-class stuff. I, I, can't, I can't say that. I can't say that enough by Donovan. Just absolutely, looking like Landon Donovan out there. 
I was about to say, he's brought the right number on. That's his fourth goal of the tournament. He's got an assist to go along with it. It's his seventh goal of the season as he scores it right at the 33 minute mark. Inside the seven minutes and now here comes the response. There's the goal that they needed to score to try to quiet down the, the peanut gallery. All right. Now, if you're Randolph, now I've seen, I've called several Del Barton games in the past. The trend usually is when they get one, they get a bunch. Now, there's not much time left in this half, but there's still plenty as they launch one here, way downfield, looking for Aiden Grant. So Andrew Levy, much easier time with this one. If you're Randolph, though. Yeah. What is your attitude here with about 6.15 to go? Do you try to get a response and get the leveling goal, or do you just try to get this to halftime and regroup for the second 40 minutes? That one. You, you get it to, try to get it to halftime. Tighten up on defense, play back, and get it there. It's five, about a little, little over five minutes left to go. And again, this is a, a Randolph team that has shown plenty of effort and speed here in this game. They are not out of this by any means, folks. But again, this is a Del Barton team that is just strength to strength. As the fans not happy with that foul call against Ethan Kim. Yeah, Kim climbed it. He was climbing. He used his, used his left hand as leverage to try to get over the top. Usually yes. using an opponent as a jungle gym is not allowed. Yeah, it's, that's a foul. Going to all the day. Oh, here comes McAloon again. Watch out. He might as well shoot from here with the length, strength of the leg that he has, but he'll be looking for a cross to the back post. Low cross, not what he wanted, and cleared out by Kim. I think you like that one. It's Liam McEldry is out there, number down of 21 for Del Barton. Randolph trying to get that through 1v4. Almost there from number 19, Ricardo Sanchez. He's been busy in this first half, and again, it's about trying to save legs as well. You wonder if you might see him rested and start the second half, then bring him on because he has been running full tilt for a good portion of this first 40 minutes. See what they try, let's we'll see what they think about doing. It's scoring game, the game scoring wise hasn't exactly been, uh, hasn't exactly allocated, that allowed them to do it. Not quite yet, but they've certainly had the opportunities. As Hang on, with, with high school, you can bring that to down, so. Exactly. And you've seen the effort level not decreasing though, Ethan Kim's. Very much in there, number 11, Iggy Martinez. Still battling as that one is cleared out of the way by Chris Zaris. I wasn't seeing, I was not seeing this, this play from Del Barton when I saw him against Chaminade. And it's, for a certain time, hey, we talked about how the, the county tournaments can get some weird results. It also sometimes brings the best out in teams. Fair. And we're kind of seeing that from both squads, though. Randolph has not played a bad game so far. Dale Barton just that little extra notch right now, but all it takes is one little play, because that's a deep ball, a collision. Levy was stranded, and it's a goal kick. There was a battle there with Aiden Grant. He thought he deserved a corner, but doesn't get one. As we're at 3.30 left in this first half. Yeah, Dale Barton's doing some things that I didn't see them try against Chaminade. They're, they're just trying to force that issue, trying to go out, go from the, about the 45 and just kick it inside and try to get that, try to get a header, try to get the goalie to come out maybe. I think maybe that's what they're trying to get him to do. This looks like Eddie Wismerski is about to re-enter the match in the last three minutes or so for Randolph. Lays it out. Colin Say. Here it goes again. Great ball by Say, but it's right to Levy. No trouble for him on that. Say has had a very nice first half. The outside back for Delmar, number 23. He's had a couple of nice crosses into the box. Been a dangerous weapon, and that's part of what Del Barton's really their philosophy is, is getting those outside backs involved, having them be part of the offense. When you do that, it's just the extra weapons. We've got some Colin Shea fans. Colin, uh, Colin Say, yes. Colin Say fans in the, in the house. That one from Ketcha Carney is blocked by Grant, but no harm comes of it. Got some Shea Coughlin fans in the house. <laughs> Again, as you said, Randolph active, not only in the stands, but in the chat. We thank all of you for watching know, us. It's, uh, Coughlin's a Delby guy. Okay. Delby player. Yeah. Well, okay, so we got a little bit, it's a little bit of 
<laughs> a little bit of uh, warring, warring back and forth here. Sure. Just, oh, that's all good. Everyone, just keep it civil. That's all we ask. Keep it civil. Oh, they're fine. <laughs> I, I didn't doubt them. I'm just saying we've we've had some things in the past. Not with these two schools, but we've had incidents <laughs> in the past with hockey games that we, well, let's just say. <laughs> The, Ber the Bernie Sanders meme, though, can come back. The Bernie Sanders meme could definitely come back <laughs> as we go into the final 130 here. Oh, man. one nothing, Del Barton on a 33rd-minute goal by Ryan Donovan as the green wave in front. Looking for their 13th county championship. But here comes Randolph. Trying to push it forward through Iggy Martinez. Well defended though, that back four, that green wall of this back line for Del Barton, holding strong so far. Ethan Kim sends a long ball over the top, looking for Ethan Martinez. Oh, and a big collision. Parker Smith coming out and doing his job, and looks like he, uh, Delivered quite the blow there to one of his defenders. And as it goes down the other way on the long ball, say, shot goes wide. Wow. And that was not far away. That was McAloon, by the way, who he collided with. As the ball, Del Barton will make a quick substitution with just 20 seconds left in this first half. It's been a good one, folks, though, between these two Morris County powerhouses, separated by just the single goal with 40 minutes of play as we hit halftime here in Sakasana. Del Barton won, Randolph zero. On the goal from Ryan Donovan. We'll be back after halftime here on more Sussex Sports. Stay with us. George J. Keller and Sons want your house to be the, the kind of home for all to see. Best roofing, window siding too. Great solar and gutters, we're here for you. Our seasoned pros are unsurpassed, so give a call, we'll take your task. Transform your home, that's what we do. So give a call, we're here for you. For roofing, siding, windows and solar, we do it all for you. George J. Keller and Sons. Your family owned operation since 1980. Call for your free...
welcome back here to the second half of the boys final for the Morris County Championships. one nothing the score in favor of Del Barton over Randolph on a 33rd minute goal by the captain Ryan Donovan. And we have figured out the mystery of the number 14. I had it settle. I, ha I had it. I had it narrowed down. And that is right. Shreese Settles. He normally wears number three. So that's Shreese Settles, number 14, out there. A little bit of uh, a mention from the out-of-town scoreboard before we go further in breaking down the first half. Final score from Columbus, Ohio. Columbus Crew 1, New York Red Bulls 2. And from NYCFC, they lead at the half 4 nothing over DC United. Both teams battling to maintain their playoff hopes. But we all know that New York is red. Let that go in the comments as it may. Anyway, back to the contest here. one nothing to Del Barton. I mean, I just go with who was here first. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't have any. I don't have any. No allegiance? I have no allegiances anywhere right yet. I'm only, the, I'm only so new into trying to actually commit myself to watching some more. <laughs> there we go. Don't, don't worry, folks. He's a hockey guy. So, we'll, so we'll I am a soccer fan free agent as we speak. I need to find a club. And you support the national team. That's what matters. Yeah. Oh, yeah. You support the national team for the World Cup. Anyway, let's get back to the game in hand yeah. as the second half is underway here. Sorry. From Sakasana, New Jersey at Roxbury High School. one nothing to score, but not indicative totally of the play. Yeah, Del no. Martin slightly a little bit better in terms of possession. A few more opportunities, but Randolph, they're really one pass away from being right back in this game. Yeah, but Del Barton right now they they could set the tone early on in the second half with uh, with some, with some with some big possessions with a big possession here and get one home. They're going deep again. They look for that back post collected by Tremonte. They must be seeing something in the defense of uh, of Rock of Roxbury or excuse me Randolph. Randolph. Yes, and they're going for those long crossing balls to the back post a lot. Right. Comes to the outside here. Liam McEldry, number 21. Did not get the start, but he's out there at the moment. Gives it back to Luca Touche. Again, we want to thank our sponsors here during Mars County Championship Weekend. We want to thank JAG One Physical Therapy, the trusted in network sports medicine resource for you, treating athletes of all ages and abilities. Get back the life you love at JAG One Physical Therapy. That's JAG1PT.com. We also want to thank our other sponsor, George J. Keller and Sons, who've been helping in northern New Jersey since 1980 as the premier home improvements contractor for roofs, siding, windows, and solar. They've been installing roofs and instilling trust since 1980 and let them show you how they can use their expertise, their years of expertise, to benefit your next project. Go to gjkeller.com. Free kick coming up here for Randolph. Everybody basically up for the Rams. It's a long ball. It's on target, and it's caught comfortably by Parker Smith. First shot on goal for Randolph. Not the first shot. That was that laser beam by Ethan Kim that went just over the bar. But it was not on goal. Not on goal. That one will technically count as Del Barton thought they had won the free kick, tried to get it going quickly, but... The referee puts the kibosh on that one. Oh, uh, here they come. And the Randolph fans getting back a little bit of their voice as the second ball just clears the field in time on that throw in. And as they try to sometimes. as they go through Ryan Donovan. Here comes the captain, but he's double teamed. Nicely done there by Elias Saris, number 14 for Randolph in white. And that's a foul. As the two brothers. Elias and Chris Zaris, number 12 and 14, double teaming number seven, Fernando Bahana, but doing so illegally in the judgment of the official. And so it'll be a free kick. You just knew, you just knew that Bahana was going to fall forward. Lucas Touche on this one. We'll see if they go for that back post ball again. Oh, yeah. And they are hurling one to the edge of the 18, headed up in the air, but with no real intent, and so Randolph will look to break on the counter, wow. but great defense by the captain, Ryan Donovan, the forward getting all the way back as Randolph tries to go forward with it on the turnover, but can't. And you see why he's earned the captain's armband. He may be the coach's son, but extremely hard worker. Really, really good. You see him there going back almost into the back line to break up that counterattack. 
Don't let him get the ball. <laughs> no, ever. <laughs> As it goes out to McEldry. Intercepted. You know, it is Kim. As Randolph looks to get some room on the outside. That one takes a deflection. Stays in play, though. Del Barton, Del Barton is hemming him in there right now. They're really tightening him up, make it, making it awfully hard. As there's a oh, shot oh, to the oh. face, it appears by number 12, Kevin Cull. He caught somebody up high. It wasn't an a, no whistle immediately, though, by the referee, so it is not a foul. As he caught number 11, Ignacio Martinez up high, but he's up and okay. So the whistle was more for the hit to the head. And either the referee didn't see it or did not deem it a foul. And so it'll be just a drop ball, and Del Barton will play it forward through McAloon. Now up to the far right side. Here come the green wave. Pushing forward with it, but well defended. <laughs> Nicely done by number two, Hunter Rodriguez, ushering that one out. But Del Barton's trying to tighten the screw here against the Rams. Donovan again got loose. Nearly did. Pass is just, just a touch too far. You're seeing a couple of different adjustments here. You're seeing Del Barton, you mentioned it, running that pinch on the sideline against Randolph, not allowing them to use the outside channel, so that goes to the back post. The header cleared away for now. But taken back up by number 24, Shea Coughlin. Intercepted, though, Chris Saris. Goes wide, and you see though, right away, even on that pass outside, two Del Barton defenders kind of, kind of a bracket defense that you would see in college football in a secondary. It's a similar kind of a pinch on the sideline. They're trying to force Randolph to be a little bit more narrow, just using that midfield, and then they can just collapse and push it forward into that back five. For Randolph, biggest thing they have to do at the moment is, is really get Ryan Donovan off the ball because he has been causing all sorts of havoc as they have their pocket pick there. And that gets a, a big cheer from the Del Barton bench. As here they come again. Cross from the side, looking for Grant, and he couldn't quite poke it home. Went for the redirection one time. Couldn't quite catch it. As the substitution will happen now for Randolph. Number 27, Jack Gretsch, the sophomore, gets his Gets a look here on the field. And it looks like another substitution is potentially pending for Randolph. Looks like that was Luke Traverso who's taking a breather. Here come the Rams. Down the left-hand side, but good defense again. Good footwork. And sending it downfield was Donovan. Ryan Donovan, that is. Two Donovans on this team. Aiden Donovan, defender, sophomore. Haven't seen him yet tonight. Randolph now trying to gain a little more confidence. They send the long ball over the top. Trying to get on the end of it. And doing so. Well, I believe Chris Zaris, but couldn't keep it in over the end line. As the Chanting continuing, though, from the Randolph side. The student section has not died, died down, and a great crowd, by the way, mm -hmm. for both finals here today. Yeah. As a Del Barton substitution. We'll see number two, Patrick McMahon, onto the field in that outside back position. It's been in, well, again, a little bit of showers for the girls' final that ended one nothing in favor of the number four seed, Chatham, on a fantastic goal from Paige Troner. And right now, a, the same score line in favor of the number one seed, Green Wave, a 33rd minute goal from Ryan Donovan. The difference at the moment, great strike from the edge of the 18. That beat Andrew Levy, who, to be fair, has made some great saves in that first half as well. Yes. He's kept his team in it, and that's all you can really ask when you're facing a team that's this good. As the cross comes in, caught easily there by Levy. Junior, wearing number 99. It's funny in the old days how you look at 99 and think that's definitely a goalkeeper, but after a couple of strikers wear 99, 
yeah. in the MLS. All of a sudden, you don't know anymore. Estel Barton looks to clear up field. Collecting it nicely was Aiden Grant. Lays it off outside. Here come the green wave again. Numbers forward. Shot scuffed a little bit there. Not getting all that was Mc was Say. Or Coughlin, I should say. That was Coughlin with the shot, but didn't get all of it. Ten minutes into this second half, still 1-0 Del Barton. I want to thank all of you for tuning in for our coverage this evening from Roxbury High School. David Hassigan here with you along with Sean Bretherick. Sean pulling double duty, color commentary, and doing the production tonight. Get ready to go here. It's a normal day. <laughs> Just a normal day. Man was doing hockey yesterday. Mm -hmm. A couple of, well, just only one game. I was just there for a long time. He's a man of many talents, Sean Brother. Lucky to have him here with us in more Sussex Sports. And again, if you're enjoying the broadcast here, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. We got still a lot of games. Football still coming up. Playoff football coming very soon, as well as. State soccer playoffs, ice hockey coming up in November. And you don't want to miss when we go live. Make sure you click the notification bell. Ooh. As that one cleared into the midriff of a player there. As Randolph now getting a little possession in their final third. Through ball, though, intercepted nicely by Bahana. And cleared up field by McAloon. Good battle so far in the midfield. It's been mostly Dell Barton in this second half, but Randolph starting to grow into the game in the last three or four minutes or so. You're seeing a little bit more of that confidence, ramping up the pressure just a little bit, and again, just picking their spots with that high press. They need to make a big stride, bigger stride. Yes, oh, a nice turn there by Liam McEldry. Bahana, top of the box. McEldry pulls his shot wide. Jersey over the head, he knew that was his chance. Yep. The freshman defender getting forward into the attack. Oh, and almost had his moment. He's got an assist on, the, on his record in his freshman season this year, not in the tournament. But he knew that was his chance to not only get his moment of glory, but to possibly seal this game as Randolph looks to regroup. Elias Zaris. Ends it over the top, good curling ball, but it just goes out of play, looking for Kevin Martinez. Didn't quite get there in time, and it'll be a throw in for the green wave. A little bit of a switch from Kevin Martinez. He was on the left side of the formation in the first half. He's moved over to the right, now going back to his normal position that appears on the left. Decent ball forward. Intercepted nice way by Katja Carney. Moving forward is Kim. Chris Saris. Now Elias Saris. Decent ball, top of the 18. Sits there. Kim, left footed shot is blocked. Not clear yet, though. Now it's cleared out. At least partially for Rendell Barton. Better from Randolph. That's the best moment of the match for them so far. Yeah. Quality spot on the field. It's a good block. But yeah, they did get that out. It's a good, good best chance that they've had. Randolph continuing to push here. As coming forward was number 19, Andrew Tremonte, moving more into an advanced role, the midfielder. It's a decent ball over the top. Looking to get there is Kim. Collision there at the edge of the 18. A massive collision. And stop it to play. We'll see what happens here. It's a yellow card coming out. Yeah, it's got to be. It's got to be. It looks like. Oh, it's, it's, it's on Randolph. Yep, it is going to be against Ethan Kim with 26 minutes to go. As that was a massive collision. Right at the edge of the 18 and never, never pulled up. Nope, but I will say this for Parker Smith. He is lucky that he got to that ball first. Those kind of collisions, if 
if there's a question of whoever gets the ball, whoever touches it first or is closer to it, usually gets the benefit of the doubt. The fact that he was able to control that ball before the collision means it's going to go his way. If it was the other way around, that could have easily been, I can't quite see with the lines here whether that would have been a penalty kick or, or where that, where a free the, where, kick. Where that play happened, I think it's a penalty. I think it might have been a penalty if it had been the other way, but good job by Parker Smith coming out and being brave as the keeper there. Still Barton with a good switch to McGeldry. Calm on the ball. A little bit higher line now for Randall. You see them inching it up a little bit. 26 minutes left to go here in this final. 1-0 Del Barton. Grant tries to bring it down, and he does. To the outside. Good tackle. Well done from Katja Carney. That's the secondary shot is covered by Livy. So Barton looking to bring on a substitution, it appears. And it is number 14, Shrey Settles. Looks like he's going to be re-entering the game. Interception and a turnover. Here comes Del Barton. Coming into his Parker Grant. Wow. Aiden Grant, no, he couldn't quite get there. And the pass was offside, it appears, or was it over the end line? Over the end line. He couldn't keep it in after he got by, got by the keeper. And that's a scary moment for Randolph, but they get away with it. Levy coming out. Didn't come out maybe quick enough. Maybe he should have left it to his nah, defender. He should have stayed in his stayed in his net there. But Randolph still just down the goal. As long as this game stays with one goal get match, with 25 minutes left, Especially with Randolph starting to grow into this game, you have every thought that this could end up being an opportunity for Randolph to tie this one up. Defense right now, very good from Del Barton. Nicely done, though, from Kachikarni, shielding off Aiden Grant. And the Rams get around Grant, who's right now just causing a bit of chaos up top. That might be all this game needs to as the captains come together, the two number 10s. Nice control off the head there from number 12, Chris Zaris. Trying to lay it back inside, but it's good defense by Tremonte. He's had a very good match tonight. He's been all over the field. As Randolph looks to set up for something, they play it inside. Ethan Kim looking to go over the top, couldn't quite get it there. That's not a green wave, that's a green wall back there. Looking very strong at the moment. Zaris looking to break through a double team. No foul. Nope, now there's one as he gets called for it. Number three out there, by the way, Nicholas Ferrero for Randolph up top at the moment, but the Rams appear to be ready to make a couple of changes. We mentioned him in the first half, Ricardo Sanchez. He is about to come back into the field. One of a couple of subs for Randolph. Looks like it might be the number 23, Alex Brandon as well, the, ju the junior who might be entering the game. So it's a shift change up front. And it is Brandon, Alex Brandon and Ricardo Sanchez. Coach Moose is putting some extra forwards into the game now. As you might expect, 23 minutes. Plenty of time at Eon's age in soccer as they spin off the turf. He's dealt with for the moment by the Rams. Nicely done there by Connor Rodriguez, number 21. And Del Barton will get the throw. Randolph, student section trying to get their team back inspired. They were a raucous group in the first half. The goal against them dulled the spirit a little bit, but they are still very much here in their numbers and they are very loud. Jack Gretsch goes out wide, cross in, looking for a deflection. Oh, it oh. just goes wide. Alex Brandon, almost with his first touch of the match, nearly puts it in past Marker Smith who was very thankful to see it go wide. 
gets a hop. And that one just goes just wide there. Just had that little redirection off the end, outside of the foot. And when you get a, a goalkeeper scrambling like that, then you know at least for the, for the minimum, they don't know where it's going. Right. <laughs> so that was certainly a uh, good moment there for Randolph. And here they come again. Randolph pushing forward. And a good defensive play. And a corner for the Rams. I believe that's their first of the match coming up here. Let's see. I believe you're right. Yes. First corner for Randolph. Sean Frederick also our statistician over there in the corner. I do what I can. <laughs> and we'll see. It looks like it will be the captain, Ethan Kim, who will send it in from the far side. Out swinger, top of the 18. Bounces around in there, not quite clear. A takedown in the box, no call from the official. Catch a Carney with a slide tackle, tries to keep it involved. But here comes Del Barton on the break. This is where they are dangerous. Catch a Carney backtracking, catches up to Tremonte and stops the fast break, but Del Barton still with possession. Now up top, they've got numbers if they hurry. Looking for McEldry, but can't get it there. And a throw in for Randolph. Things are getting picked up here in the last 20 minutes of this match. 20 minutes and 18 seconds to go. Still 1-0, Del Barton, the number one seed, taking on the number 11 seed, Randolph Rams, who have come in in great form into this match. They've won four of their last five, with wins at home against Mendham and Chatham, away wins against Mendham and Mount Olive. They're only lost in the last five. You guessed it, the team they're facing tonight, Del Barton. 4 nothing loss. Del Barton, five consecutive wins as it comes Randolph, though, on the break. Not quite cleared. Nicely done by the Rams, but that law is laid off. Will anyone get there? Zaris tries to fight for it, keeps it in play, but turns it over. Catch a Carney, nice touch. Keeps it for the Rams. This is Alex Brandon. Plays it back to Elias Zaris. Zaris looking to send a cross in. Good defense, Brandon. Didn't quite get it there. A nice turn. Randolph equalizes! It's one all! And what a goal it is for Kevin Martinez! Number seven! Oh, man! What a little touch and turn! What's this setup? He turns around and then beats the keeper. His keeper thinks, the keeper thinks that his defense has got it. And Rodriguez is able to spin around. Martinez. Martinez is able to spin around off the defender and go off to the races and beat the keeper to the ball. What a turn by Martinez. That little touch around the defender. And with 20 minutes left to go at 19-13, left in the half, Kevin Martinez has leveled it. It is 1-1 in the Mars County Final. All to play for. Here comes Del Barton again. Good defense by Catcher Carney, who just launches it downfield. My goodness, what drama here at Roxbury. And we'll see who makes the next move. Looks like a change coming for both. Oh no, it looks like two, potentially two changes. Nope, just one change. That's a ball boy on the far side, but one change coming up for Randolph again. No roll of the dice yet from Coach David Donovan. Although he's got plenty of aces on that bench. As that's out of play. And the substitution coming now for Randolph. And it's number eight, Luke Traverso. Back onto the field. And it's the goal scorer, Kevin Martinez, going to the bench, at least for now. You'd expect that the goal scorer will probably not be on the bench very long. Just a quick breather for him, perhaps. What an incredible second half. Del Barton with a long cross. Falls out to number 19 of Tremonte. This is Settles. That cross is blocked. 
and just cleared by Randolph. That green wall breached for just the second time in this tournament. The only other time they allowed a goal was in the second round against Hanover Park. But if there's one thing that Coach Donovan has instilled in this program, it's a confidence to stay calm. But how calm can you be against the highly motivated? Long ball, too far that time from Touche. And it's out for a goal kick with 17 minutes to go. A chilly evening here in Sukkasana. Great crowd on hand for both schools. A lot of bystanders here, some college coaches I'm sure in the crowd. Keeping an eye on some players for both sides. This Randolph team has shown no quit. Even after allowing a goal in the last 10 minutes of the first half, it has been a fantastic effort from Coach Moose's boys. And a long ball to the right-hand side. It's again a team that pulled a shock in the semifinal against the number two seed Mount Olive. Can they pull another one here against the best team in the county? Del Barton will look to do anything to a hand to avoid it. And it's a great slide tackle from Elias Zaris. And it's cheered almost like a goal here on the to our fans to our right. Yeah, because he won the ball. Won the ball beautifully on that challenge. Zaris gets his pocket pick that time, though. Tremonte. Tremonte moving forward. Takes a shot from range, and it's well wide and high. Decided to have the effort, though. Didn't have any other option. Add Aiden Grant to his left, but both players with two defenders marking them. As we enter the last 15 minutes of this contest. <laughs> Sent clear by Colin Say. But out for a throw in. And another substitution coming for the Rams. And coming back in is the goal scorer, Kevin Martinez. We didn't think it would be long, and it wasn't. Comes on for Alex Brandon, who had a good performance off the bench, though, in that last 10 to 15 minutes. He certainly had an impact. And if he was a hockey player, plus one. Yes. Coming forward is the green wave again, but Randolph defending in numbers. Trying to collect and go forward down the right-hand side. Chris Zaris. Nice interchange play, but... Little off on that last pass, but it's out for a throw in by Elias Harris. The brothers playing on this right hand side. Some good interchanges though. This is Kim. Plays it into the midfield. Elias Harris. Trying to look into the middle. Good defense there from Del Barton. As they move it forward through Kevin Cull. Here comes Aiden Grant. In the front three now of Shea Coughlin, Aiden Grant, and Ryan Donovan for Del Barton, who are looking for a goal to seal this in regular time. It's the regular season coming to a close very soon for both programs. The tournament season for Morris County closing for the state just about to open up. Cross coming in from the far side, no one in the back post. Not cleared all the way though, Bahana, oh with a scissor kick and nearly got it in a collision there between Andrew Levy and Ryan Donovan and again the goalkeepers union will take offense to that one. Yeah, he's pointing at him to tell him where he needs to be. <laughs> if you saw after a saving me, he pointed at something. <laughs> it's not here, stay over there. Yeah, you belong over there. Del Barton pushing up the right hand side now. Looking inside to Grant. There's a little kick out and that's gonna be a foul. A free kick for the Rams. They get it back underway quickly. Trying to get numbers involved. 
Looking for a long ball over the top. Settles, defending. He's got two players over there for Randolph against him. Holds on and clears brilliantly. Wow. Nice save, though, by Elias Zaris. Keeping possession for Randolph. And another clearing ball deep down the field. Here comes Grant, trying to beat two defenders. Can't do it. Nicely done by the chat, by the Randolph defense. Zaris just sends it off of the body of Coughlin. A long ball over the top. A chance for Randolph. The shot off the post. Nearly. Nearly the moment. What an incredible shot by number 19, Ricardo Sanchez. Nearly puts it home. He had Smith beaten. Randolph continues forward. The belief is there now for the Rams. But a nice interception from Del Barton. Referee plays advantage. Coughlin going over the top. Nice touch forward by number 19, Tremonte. Tremonte looks for a cross, plays the ball inside. Popped up in the air, not fully clear. Back spinning ball all over the place, settles. Collected though by the Rams. Nice play by Cole. As Kim goes one on one with Bahana. 11 minutes to go in the final. 1 1 between Del Barton and Randolph. Opening goal in the first half from Ryan Donovan at the 33 minute mark. But leveled here with 19 13 to go in the second half by Kevin Martinez. As you see a couple of the players for Randolph starting to cramp up on the field. Despite the temperatures, the amount they've run tonight, it's no, it's no question that that's, that's a possible cause. Oh, yeah. As the fat heads bob up and down in the crowd here. It's always one fat head down in the front row. I think somebody has a Vuvuzela, by the way, on the, to the right of us. I haven't heard one. I heard it during halftime. I don't think it has been used, or if it has, it's been in the midst of much cheering and celebration. That one's out of bounds on the far side. Randolph looks like they're about to make another change. We'll see who that is coming in on the far side. Intercepted there by Kim. Turning with it and trying to break his Randolph. They'll collect instead and get numbers forward. Nicely done to Zaris. Chris Zaris into the midfield. Good switch of play. Here come the Rams. Moving forward down the left-hand side. Good crossover. The cross is in. Dealt with nicely. I believe that was McAloon. As the substitution comes in now for Randolph. Going forward now with a chance is Randolph. 9.26 to go here in the contest. Shot from range goes just wide. As Randolph has grown into this game with nine minutes to go. Barton coming forward now into the midfield. Going out to the wing is Del Barton. Again, that confidence instilled by their leader, Coach David Donovan. When you've had that much success, why wouldn't you have the confidence? But Coach Mooses, after a Struggling start. This is a Randolph team that started two and four. They've dropped two games since then. And it's a totally different squad. He's made a few adjustments as the season went on. And you can see the change in this team from September to now. As they go along over the top, Smith backs off, waits and clears. Not all the way though. Randolph still in possession. It's been Randolph in the ascendancy. They've had a majority of the ball here. 
in the last 15. Catch a Carney. Lays it off wide. And you wonder now again, who will be the hero for this, for one of these two teams? Not cleared by Smith, but now eventually cleared out by his defense. And that was a moment of real trepidation yeah, there, Burdell Barton. You ain't kidding. Burdell Barton has certainly put in another fantastic performance this season at 12 and 2. Just two blemishes on their record. One of which coming against the top team in the nation, or one of the top teams in the nation, St. Benedict's. They've only had one other loss Ooh. this season. There's a big challenge and a foul. Doesn't look like a card coming, though. There's a big collision there. And a player down for the Rams. And they'll make that substitution quickly. Wow. Looks like it's Josh Bodner, I believe, number six, who's coming on, the sophomore. The only other loss this year for Del Barton was against Chatham, a one nothing defeat. As a free kick coming for the Green Wave. And it is Bodner, number six, out there. So the ball is caught by... Levy, who will now try to send it long, but he shanks it. Good control, Bundell Barton, a mistake. We'll see if they can capitalize on it. And that's a foul against Randolph. Traverso knocks over Ryan Donovan. And another free kick coming. And Donovan will leave this to the big leg of number 15, Rory McAloon. 5.40 left to go in this regular time. 1-1 one, one the score between Del Barton and Randolph. McAloon sends it to the back post. Looking for bodies, a flag up though, and a foul, a shove called on Del Barton. And again, if this does go past the 80 minutes, two 10 minute Sudden victory, extra time periods. And if necessary, kicks from the penalty spot. Long ball on the overlapping run, but Smith goes out and will take it. Parker Smith recovering nicely after allowing that goal. And settles. We'll send it back to the midfield to McAloon. Under five minutes to go here. What a final this has been, Sean. Fantastic final. Rip back and forth. As Randolph forces another turnover. They've been busy in the midfield now. Reverso. Nice header back into the middle. Jack Gretsch lays it off. Nice interchange. Bodner tries to center it, but couldn't quite get all of it. Nice defense by Del Barton and collected by Smith. The confidence growing with every touch from the Randolph Rams. Great interchanging passes. And yeah, that's the scary thing. And if you're Del Barton right now, the biggest thing you could have hoped to do after taking the allowing that goal was to get control back of the game. If anything, it's gone the other direction. Right. Four minutes left to go as a change for Randolph. We'll see one of the captains, Ethan Kim, back on the field. Is there a moment of glory left in this last four minutes of play? Catch a Carney, just sends it long, hoping to cause a little chaos. Collected by Gretsch. Ends up going to Donovan. Now Tremonte has his pocket picked, but it's a good muck about in the midfield at the moment. Here comes Del Barton again through Coughlin. Reverso. Defending Tremonte. Cross in from the wing. Gets almost through. They were looking for their big targets up there. Kim battling with Cull. 
Kim with a high boot, and that's a free kick for the Green Wave. Three minutes to go here. Ethan Kim can't quite believe the call. Neither can the Randolph faithful. Down to our right. The boot was certainly high, whether it got close enough to the face of his opponent to be ruled a foul. That's up to the man wearing the neon colors. And it's a dangerous spot for Del Barton. Donovan will take this one himself. The commit to Holy Cross. Sends it in. Back post, looking for Grant. Well defended, and it's a goal kick. Nicely done there. By the Randolph back line, another change for the Rams as back on is the goal scorer, Kevin Martinez, number seven. Two minutes to go here in regulation. And again, we thank you for watching all of our coverage here from Roxbury. As here come the Rams. Pressure and a foul. A bit of a late fall there from Luca Touche, according to the Randolph faithful, but it looked like he did get caught there on the hip. The Randolph faithful, though, not happy. Minute 30 to go here. Parker Smith will handle this one. Ends it high, it's a good boot from Smith. One out of the air by Kim though. Ignacio Martinez sends it over the top, but it's too far. And claimed by Smith, he was looking for Ricardo Sanchez who came close to giving his team the lead, hitting one off the post. Nice interception again by Randolph. Kim though gets it caught in his feet. The battle of the tens there with Donovan. Good slack tackle there by Kachakarne. Del Barton with 50 seconds to go. A turnover. Randolph looking for some space. They've got it on the left-hand side. They go to Martinez. Offside, says the linesman. And the Randolph bench cannot believe it. Coach Moosis pleading the innocence of his players with 30 seconds to go. And actually, it looks like it might have been a, yeah, it was a foul, free kick. Free kick to Randolph, and a little bit too much protestation there from the bench, and it's a yellow card to one of the coaches with 10 seconds. The players trying to get the ball ready to go. And now they stop the clock with eight seconds left. And again, with a yellow card, the clock's supposed to stop immediately. And there was at least 20 seconds left on the clock. It's now down to eight seconds. And they're gonna put the time back to 22 seconds. seconds. 22 seconds gonna be put back on the clock for the yellow card to the bench. Again, we don't know if that was to the head coach or someone on the coaching staff, but one last shot here in the dying seconds for Randolph. Del Barton now with their backs against the wall. Kim sends it in towards Smith. Caught confidently though by Parker Smith. Does he have time for the counter? 15 seconds, going long. Nicely controlled by Ketcha Carney, but here comes Del Barton. Randolph can't stop with seven seconds. Del Barton, do they have one more shot? It's a free kick, but no card. And that will do it. Full time here at Roxbury. And we've got some bonus soccer to come. 1-1 between Del Barton and Randolph. Goals from Ryan Donovan and Kevin Martinez. Two 10-minute Sudden victory periods to come here at Roxbury. We'll be back after this break here on more Sussex Sports. George J. Keller and Sons want your house to be the kind of home for all to see. Best roofing, windows, siding too. Great solar and gutters, we're here for you. Our seasoned pros are unsurpassed, so give a call, we'll take your task. Transform your home, that's what we do. So give a call, we're here for you. For roofing, siding, windows and solar, we do it all for you. George J. Keller and Son. Your family owned operation since 1980. Call for your free estimate.
welcome back here for the start of extra time here in the boys Morris County Tournament Final. We had bonus soccer and drama in the girls final between Chatham and West Morris. We might as well have it here between Randolph and Del Barton. David Hassegan here along with Sean Brotherick. And Sean, this is why games aren't played on paper. What a battle this has turned into be. The heart and the determination. It's just been absolutely, uh, just been absolutely incredible. And we'll see if, if Randolph was able to equalize, can they get another one? Or can they hold it until PKs where anything can happen? Well, right now, they have all of the momentum. The fans are up. The Barton players trying to get their fan section ready to go. As the extra time period is underway, again, sudden victory. Two 10-minute periods if we need them. A goal is scored. That will end it. And the girls' final, it ended on a 35-yard free kick. What will it be here? And again, we want to thank you for joining us on our live stream here from Sukasana. As the ball goes forward, quickly off his line was Parker Smith. We also want to thank our sponsors again, Jag One Physical Therapy and George J. Keller and Sons for sponsoring our broadcasts tonight. As Morris Championship Week concludes. For these teams, still a couple games left to go in the regular season as well after this game, although how they'll be up for those games as they are for this one, I don't know. <laughs> for Randolph, it's a home game with Montville and a road game against Morristown left to play. For Del Barton, three games left, away game at Chatham, and an array, a potential Revenge home and away, a great block Whoa. there. Great job there by the back line. Well done. Oh. By number 21, Connor Rodriguez and a foul and a free kick. But again, after the Chatham game, a home and away battle with Montville awaits for Del Barton, one of the best public teams in the state. And an early opportunity here for Randolph. Catch a Carney, will take it. He's been a bulldog in that back line. He's had an excellent performance. Sends a high arcing ball to the edge of the 18. Falls to Martinez, but it gets cleared away. Not all the way though, still there for Randolph. Trying to get to Martinez though and couldn't get there. And now here comes Del Barton on the break. Coming forward is Coughlin. Nicely done by the back line again. Martinez can't quite keep it in. It's a throw in for the Green Wave. As Collins Say sends it back in to McAloon, who will switch the field. Pressure from Randolph, but nicely avoided. And out of play, though, and it'll go to Randolph. So we enter 7.30 or so left to go in this first extra time period. And again, if there's no scores after the next 20 minutes, we will go to kicks from the spot. The dreaded PKs. And with a final that has been this fantastic, you hope it ends with a fantastic play on the field as well. We said this at the beginning of the extra time in the girls final. You hope it's on a fantastic piece of play and not a mistake. As Randolph will come forward here. Kevin Martinez, oh. nice interchange with Ethan Kim. Martinez cuts back inside, hands it back off to Kim. Cannot get through, though. A great play. McAloon again. McAloon has been outstanding, and so has Katja Carney, the two best defenders on the field all night. <laughs> My goodness, what an interchanging play, though, between Kevin Martinez and Ethan Kim down this left-hand side. And you can feel there's, there's a swagger now about this Randolph team. There really is, and it happened from the goal on. But Del Barton still to be respected. Here comes Kim, though. Looks over the top. Oh, McAloon, McAloon again. again. <laughs> the tower of a defender back there. He's got to be at least 6'2", 6'3". If he's any shorter, that ball's over his head. Back pass, though. McAloon retrieves and gets it back to Parker Smith. Calmly. Just that's the poise of a defender that you need. As Del Barton will take a breath here. And you can see now where Randolph is trying to put their press. It's right when they get into that midfield third. 
Press comes forward. Nicely done there. And Randolph takes it over. Given to Ricardo Sanchez. He had the best moment after that last goal as he immediately holds his leg. And that does not look good. But it might just be a cramp. He's trying to run on still. And he will. He keeps going. It, I, you hope that's just a cramp and it's not anything worse that he's trying to play through right now. Uh, I think it's cramp. Ethan Kim will control and settle it. His teammate's not playing it out, so they don't think it's too bad of an issue. No, he goes he forward again, but he takes it over this time, and no, we just... He can't, he, can't, he can't plant. Can't plant, and he can't cut. As the game plays on, though. Randolph has to be able to make a change. He's got to make a change to get 11 players out there at full strength. Del Barton trying to use this to their advantage. They are under no obligation to put this ball out of play. And neither is up to the referee. Coming forward, Colin Say sends a cross in. Nicely done by Catcher Carney. 50-50 duel. Say with a rocket, oh. big save! Andrew Levy! Almost a golazo to win the final. But what a save by Levy. This is gonna be what I want to call for now on the Superman punch. Just Fantastic. put it up in the air, man. Unbelievable. And they will stop the clock now as Ricardo Sanchez is back down as Looks like they're treating it as a cramp, but they have stopped the clock here with 4.10 to go. What a save by Levy. Unbelievable. And it was almost, I believe that was Say on that shot. Uh, 24. Oh, no, that was Coughlin, excuse me. Almost Coughlin as they will move Ricardo Sanchez off the pitch and try to treat that cramp on the sideline. Corner kick for Del Barton. Will it be on a set piece? Whipped in from the far side. It's over everyone. And Kim will just send it upfield. Off the face of a devout player, off the foot of Martinez. He sends it forward. A chance again for Randolph. The goalkeeper's out, but he gets shoved out of the way. He's going to... Call it a shove, but I think it was just a collect. No, he fell. I think it was a clatter of feet and just an incidental trip. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. That would have been the moment. As now it's Say. Calming things down. That was almost the moment for Luke Traverso, the senior. Out here on this left-hand side, he now goes back. Coughlin. Oh, thought he had his moment of glory but snatched away from him by Levy. And a nice intercept by Randolph, but it'll be a Del Barton th throw in. Three minutes to go here in this first extra time period. Sending it forward is Cull, headed away, and offside was Del Barton. And a free kick the other direction. We having fun here yet? <laughs> what a night it's been in Sakasana. As the chill is really set in here. Long ball over the top. McAloon deals with it. As that one goes over the top. And a nice catch by a fan on the track. Well done. Trying to push it through there was Martinez. High ball with the back spin off the turf. Everyone just kind of standing around watching it for a couple of seconds, but it's claimed by Aiden Grant. But Randolph recovers. Poke through, not all the way though. Tremonte, but can't control it. Jack Gretsch, number 27, the sophomore. So that one almost gets through again to Kevin Martinez. He's the man who leveled it for Randolph. In the second half, Connor Rodriguez 
Looks for an outlet. He's got Martinez one on one. McAloon tracking back. The shot from Martinez is well wide. Great one on one defending from McAloon again. As that was a great ball forward from Connor Rodriguez and a great run by Kevin Martinez. A minute 30 to go in this first extra time period. The winning girl, goal in the girls' final came with just 31 seconds left in the first extra time. Is there a little bit of extra soccer left in this one? Headed back up and away. Bahana shoved to the ground by Grant. And now Randolph with a chance. Looking for Martinez, McAloon. It's a one-on-one -on -one battle between those two right now. McAloon, for the most part, has won those battles. 45 seconds to go here in the first extra time period. This game far from what many predicted. This has been a classic in the Morris County Final as it's sent clear all the way down. No one really there for Del Martin. And Randolph can calmly take this one at their goalkeeper. Again, the meetings in the regular season were win for Del Barton of 3-0 and 4-0. But this is a very different Randolph team. Trying to get it forward for one last chance, but a good clearance there by Say. Kim keeps it in. Eight seconds to go in the first extra time period. It's off the foot. And we will have another 10 minutes of soccer from Sakasana. 10 minutes to get the winner. Otherwise, it will go on to the duel of the strikers and the keepers. We'll be back after this quick message. 1-1 between Del Barton and Randolph here on More Sussex Sports. George J. Keller and Sons want your house to be the kind of home for all to see. Best roofing, windows, siding too. Great solar and gutters, we're here for you. Our seasoned pros are unsurpassed, so give a call, we'll take your task. Transform your home, that's what we do. So give a call, we're here for you. For roofing, siding, windows and solar, we do it all for you. George J. Keller and Sons. Your family owned operation since 1980. Call for your free estimate. Final 10 minutes, if it's needed, from Roxbury High School in Sakasana. Tied at one between the number one seed, Del Barton, and the number 11 seed, Randolph, in the board's Morris County Final. David Hassigan here along with Sean Bretherick. A maximum of 10 minutes decides whether or not this will be a game scored on the field. Or will it go to penalty kicks with tired legs? An absolute classic day in Morris County soccer history between the two finals here today. The winner from Chatham from Paige Droner against Westmore Central. And this one tonight between Randolph and Del Barton. Kim will get it back underway, sends it long. Knocked out by Shreya Settles. And out for a throw-in. And it has to be said, Sean, 
It has been all Randolph since that goal. It seems like they've got every ounce of momentum on their side right now. Yeah, you got to think. It, it just really does seem that way. And if it hasn't been for the efforts of Rory McAloon in that back line for Del Barton, this could have game could have easily been over. Long ball ahead, offside, the flag goes up. And he looked to be at about a yard off there. Good decision by the linesman. Although the Randolph fans showing their displeasure as they often would. Del Barton brings it forward, settles. Shreus settles. Goes wide to Donovan. Uh -oh. Donovan coming in on his right foot, tries to split two defenders. The referee tells him to get up, no foul. And Randolph will go the other way. Ethan Kim lays it into the middle. Two players going for it, neither of them get it. Good play there by Colin Say, who's had an excellent game himself. And Levy will take some time here. We made our predictions off camera here about how we thought this game would end. As it goes back again and cleared nicely by Parker Smith. But if this goes to penalty kicks right now, who does it favor, do you think, Sean? Because right now the momentum's all with Randolph. You almost think it would be a help for Del Barton yes. to slow things down. Uh, I, that's what I'm saying. I think, I think that it would help. And a player down for Randolph. They're going to stop things here. And they will stop the clock with 8.03. As that was a big collision and signal coming from Anthony Cacciacarni that a substitution will be needed. And I think that is the other captain, Ethan Kim. Got a bit of a collision there. And you can tell he's in a considerable amount of pain. They're gonna need, and if this gets to PKs, they need to have him on the lineup for that. For sure. And we'll see what they're holding both lights up. Might be a double cramp uh, for Ethan Kim, and that does happen, and that is extremely painful. In fact, there's a lot of Randolph players getting stretched out or stretching themselves out all over the pitch right now. And again, as much as it is a sound mind and clear thinking, despite running for 100 minutes in a penalty shootout, it's having the legs as well. And it'll be interesting to see how the teams play this. We've seen a lot more player rotation from Randolph than we have Del Barton. We've also seen more cramp ups from the Rams players in this game. But again, another part that we have mentioned that sometimes teams have specific goalkeepers that are good at penalty shootouts. So the question is, will the two keepers out there, Andrew Levy and Parker Smith, will they be the go-tos if this goes to kicks from the spot? If that substitution is gonna happen, you probably wouldn't see it until the last maybe minute or so of the match as well as any players that you might want to see in a penalty shootout. And it's a very much a double cramp for Ethan Kim. As he's back on his feet to warm applause from the fans here. A tremendous effort from everybody on both teams in this game. It is a shame that one of these teams will have to go home with a loss. But that is how tournaments work. Soccer, you can get the tie, not in a tournament game. As Kim is slowly jogging off. We'll see how long he's on the sideline. Quick throw in, but easily taken by Randolph, who sends it long. McAloon goes back and calmly takes it away. Nicely done. He's had a tremendous game tonight, senior. And you could hear from some of the people in the crowd around us, if it isn't for him, this game might very well be over. And a lot of fast breaks from Randolph, as now we are holding up play again. Not sure the reason this time. 
They stop the clock. Clock has not stopped. It was like a talking to for the referee to a couple of players there telling them to knock it off. We've only had the couple of physical plays, but I haven't seen a ton of that later on. Martinez, shot saved by Parker Smith. Tough angle there for Kevin Martinez, who's got the tally tonight for the Rams. Seven minutes to go here in extra time. Claiming it back is Kevin Cull. Trying to go up to Coughlin. But it's out of play. It's a Randolph throw. And you can see them just trying to do anything to try to break that back line. And there's a decent ball going up the left-hand side. Trying for it, but good defense again from Del Barton. But it's out for a corner. It's not. It wasn't. It is. <laughs> it was McAloon again? Yep. Still in Wally Martinez, but a corner kick here for the Rams. They're only their second of the match. 6.16 to go. In swinger. Far side. Headed away. Trying to head that along and keep it. Del Barton trying for the counter. They can't quite get it. It's a throw in for the Rams. You can feel that there's a ton of energy just waiting to burst forth in this crowd. But it is a hushed and nervous mum right now. From several hundred spectators here in Roxbury. Again, just waiting to burst if there is a winning goal. Zaris lays it off inside. Cuts in, the shot, not quite all of it from Jack Gretsch. Scuffed it a little bit, easy collected by Parker Smith. Almost the moment for the sophomore. And Smith will just send it out to Shreya Settles. Settles, nice little move. Moving down the left-hand side. Good slide, tackle low from his opposite number, Elias Zaris. Five minutes to go, halfway through the second extra time period. Settles, looking for an option to throw it in. Finds the option. That was Tremonte. Now it goes wide. Donovan. Ryan Donovan, cross, back post. Nicely done. The Chatham back line answering. And now a turnover. Here come the Rams. Decent ball forward, looking for Martinez. Nice defense though, that time by Luca Touche. Now the other oh, direction. Come on now. And a foul, and it's gonna be a yellow card. Yeah. It is a yellow to number 19, Ricardo Sanchez. Second yellow card of the game. Both against Randolph, and that will force a substitution. Kim. Red card. And a red card now. For who? Wait a minute. That was a yellow card shown. It was not to Kim. Was it a ye second yellow or a straight red on that play? I'm not sure what that was, but it looks like number three, Nicholas Ferrero, is off for Randolph. He's off the field. That might have been the red card. It might have been because of something said. Oh, my goodness. More high drama. Wow. So now Randolph playing with 10. Randolph down to 10 men for the last 4.05. Is that the help Del Barton needed? They've been struggling to get the momentum back. As that looked like a certain handball, but not called. And the crowd getting restless on the Randolph side. And that must have been a red card for something said. That's the only yeah. thing I can think. And I'm not sure if that was a red card to Ferrero because he came off or whether it was for Sanchez for something after he got the yellow card for himself. But down to 10 men regardless are the Rams. And Del Barton now trying to establish some pressure, but a turnover. Here comes Randolph, but intercepted by, guess who? McAloon. But right there to respond is Kachakarni. 
Tell you what, I'll, I'll take those two in my back line any day of the week. I mean, really. Both of them. I don't know who's in charge of the all-tournament team or if there, is an e if there even is one. They both deserve to be on there just for this performance alone. Trying to settle, but taken away by Ryan Donovan, the captain, the goal scorer for Del Barton tonight. You feel that the ball might end up at his feet in a crucial moment tonight in the last three, 2.48 to go. Going down the wings. Looking for a foul was Del Barton. They will not get one. And it's out for a throw in instead. Del Barton has been trying to regain their foothold for pretty much all of extra time. And now with Randolph down to 10 men, this might be the only chance they have to do it. Here comes the green wave. Cross gets over the top of Aiden Grant. And out of play for a throw with 2.10 to left. We talked about it before. <laughs> Does Randolph or Del Barton want the, the penalty kicks? Now I think it's Randolph. So the throwing goes down the line with two minutes to go. Settles wins the header, but not the second ball. But everybody on defensive duty for the Rams. Intercepted and sent the other direction. Can Randolph get the stunner? <laughs> nope, it's McAloon again, but he loses out this time. Martinez, one-on-one, -on -one, shoulder to shoulder, and now Martinez is down with a cramp. Really 11 against nine now for Del Barton. Bahana looking to get through. Martinez trying to get to his feet. It ends up with Aiden Grant. Goes all the way through, and Levy dies on the ball with 1.21 to go. And they will stop the clock with 119. And it's certainly another cramp. And a couple of Del Barton players looking like they're going to go over to at least check on Martinez. As I'll tell you what, what a battle that Martinez has had with McAloon pretty much the entire second half. Martinez beat him once. It was that beautiful touch around him on the tying goal in the second half. McAloon since then has been a tour de force in that back line, but Martinez has, I'll tell you what, pushed him every inch of the way. And now 119 to go before penalty kicks. And this is the question now for Coach Moosis. How much faith do you have in keeping Martinez out here? You have so many of your players cramping. He's one of your best. But is it worth it with penalty kicks looming? He does have a player or two warming up. So Martinez is up and he will walk to the sideline. And it'll be Eddie Wismerski coming on in his place here. We'll see if they get Martinez back on in the last 119. Will they be able to? It'll be a drop ball. And Randolph will just send it long and out for a Del Barton throw. A minute 10 to go. Del Barton looking for the winner to crush Randolph Hartz. Bahana. Nice footwork, but a good block. Cull, long shot, blocked. Another shot pulled wide. The miss there from Tremonte, and you can see there Tremonte now with a cramp with 40 seconds. As one of the Randolph players coming to his assistance. This has been a heavy battle the whole way for both teams. Ethan Kim, though, showing the respect that both of these squads have earned for each other tonight. What a tremendous performance from both of these squads of young men. And we talked about how Del Barton was the team with the names, a couple D1 commits. I'll tell you what, if you could get a recruit on Hart, 
every single player on this field deserves an offer right now. Forty seconds left in extra time. Penalty kicks looming large. And in penalty kicks, anything can happen. As Tremonte is up and off to the sideline. Getting ready to restart here. And a goal kick from Andrew Levy. He came up with a couple of brilliant saves as well in the first half and one excellent one in the second. Sent long over the top. Randolph just trying to hold on with 10 men. Del Barton gets a throw with 30 seconds. Trying to get it back in quickly. Rattles around. Donovan tries to lay it through. Cleared, though, by Kachakarni. Going over the top. 19 seconds. One last moment, perhaps. And nearly there, but great job by Luca Touche. Recovers nicely. Kevin Cull, eight seconds left. A handball. Going Randolph's way. But that will do it. The penalty spot will decide a Morris County champion. We will be back for penalty kicks here on More Sussex Sports. George J. Keller and Sons want your house to be the kind of home for all to see. Best roofing, windows, siding too. Great solar and gutters, we're here for you. Our seasoned pros are unsurpassed, so give a call, we'll take your task. Transform your home, that's what we do. So give a call, we're here for you. For roofing, siding, windows and solar, we do it all for you. George J. Keller and Sons. Your family owned up. here in Sukasana, the ultimate of high drama that can be achieved in a, pen, in a soccer match, the penalty shootout with a title on the line. Del Barton came into this as the number one seed, highly favored, missing a couple of their key players though, no Andrew Cassiano, no Nate Zimmerman. Randolph came in as the severe underdog despite their recent form as the number 11 seed. It has been nothing but a war and it can be argued that for good portions of this match, especially in the second half, Randolph has been the better team. And it has come down to kicks from the spot to decide a champion. Best of five, extra shooters if necessary. 
And the penalty kicks will be taken at the Randolph end of the field in front of their huge supporting cast of fans and parents and students. I mean, in a way, there's no better way this could end, Sean. No. In another way, there's no worse and more painful way it could end. Honestly, I get what you're getting from, but I honestly think that this is the only way for this kind of game because nothing could be proven in the regular time, and now it has to come down to this. And now if you fall short on this, it's you, you have yourself... You have yourself the the token of saying the reason why you lost it. It wasn't because of the mistake that was made. Del Barton to shoot first. Donovan. The captain, Donovan, shoots. Saved! A huge save by Levy! He stonewalls the captain! My goodness! Still so long to go, but what a save by Levy. Pick the right spot. And now it'll be the Randolph captain, Anthony Kachakarni, who has been excellent in this back line all night to try to give Randolph the advantage against Parker Smith. The step up, goal! Advantage, Randolph after one. A brilliant, PK into the side netting. And Del Barton will go to another one of their stars for tonight. Andrew Tremonte next, number 19. The senior. Who's got a goal and two assists in the tournament. From the spot this time. The run up. Oh, Saved by oh, Levy! Oh, are you kidding me? No way! Andrew Levy! with a stunning save. He picks the right way twice. He goes left for the other, and then right here. Unbelievable. And now here comes the other captain for Randolph, Ethan Kim. Short run up. Kim over the bar and he misses. Oh my goodness, the chance for the major advantage for Randolph. And it goes over the bar from Kim. Oh my goodness. And Del Barton with a chance to level it again. Number nine, Aiden Grant. PK, save again by Levy! This man is Scott Sterling reincarnated. Are you kidding? What in the world is going on here? I've never seen this. This is ridiculous. This is. Look at this. He picks right three times. Three times. He this, picked right. This is reminiscent of Dutch goalkeeper Tim Krul, who was brought in to a major tournament final with a minute to go and got them the win. Number 23 now, Alex Brandon for Randolph. Buries it. Big advantage to the Rams. And now, it's going to be up to the defender, Colin Say. Colin Say needs to score. If he does not, oh my gosh. Randolph will be the champions. You better not kick it left. Levy, Say, nice cheeky finish from the defender, Colin Say, who's had himself quite the evening. Goes down the middle. But Randolph now still with a chance to win it. And it's the man who got them here. Yep. Kevin Martinez. A goal will put Randolph on the trophy. It's up to Parker Smith. Martinez. Scores! The underdogs, the Randolph Rams, have done it in Sakasana. As the student section storms the field and swamps 
Kevin Martinez. What an incredible script. Written in Suckasana, New Jersey. The Randolph Rams, the 11 seed, after starting the year two and four, are Moores County champions. It's hard to write a script that was better than the first game we had today in the girls' county final. And yet somehow, these two groups of young men, Del Barton and Randolph, have found a way. An opening goal in the first half by Ryan Donovan. The equalizer by Kevin Martinez with 20 minutes to go. Multiple opportunities both ways. Incredible saves. And then with goals by Katja Carney, Alex Brandon, and Kevin Martinez. And three incredible saves by Andrew Levy. It is the Randolph Rams who collect the hardware. Sean, who writes this? Who writes this? I don't know. Got to get them on the phone, though. Can we get them an Academy Award now? Please. Because that was... Can we, can we just talk about... Can we just talk about Andrew Levy real quick? Unbelievable. Who, who the heck saves three consecutive PKs? Who does that? I've never seen in any level of soccer that ever happen. Guy stops three straight shots. I've seen a lot of goalkeepers guess the right way every time. It's been a long time since I've seen that. What an incredible moment from the junior, who not only stops the first three, but two of them against players who will be playing in Division One next season. <laughs> Again, the divisions don't matter, the stars don't matter, the grades don't matter. What I tell you? The field and the game matters. What happens? What did I tell you again before this game? Who looked and watched what happened? What happened with Chatham? What happened against them and Wes Morris? What was the key? The goalkeeper. Yeah. And it happened again. And you think about that incredible save off the shot by Shea Coughlin in the second half. That incredible volley that Levy was able to get a hand to there. That would have been incredible enough if he had made that save and had gotten it to this point. To do what he just did in that penalty shootout has just earned him hero status at Randolph High School. And again, forget the seed, forget everything we thought coming into this match. And, and how about, can I talk about one other thing? Yeah. Andrew Levy is a, is a junior. So Brian Macaluso is the senior goalkeeper on this team. Yes. And the fact of the matter is, and they're, and they're mopping him. <laughs> the fact of the matter is the senior does not play the final of his, of his last Morris County tournament. But his teammate gets it done, and he couldn't be, he couldn't be more happier. He was one of the first players over to congratulate right. him. And you got to talk about the, you got to talk about the class. And the good sportsmanship of Brian Macaluso, who did not get into, game, not get into this game um, as a senior, gets to celebrate with his teammates. He gets the, he gets this moment, even though he wasn't the guy, even though he wasn't the guy out there to make those stops. Andrew Levy was, and my goodness, did he do it! Unbelievable, an incredible finish to an incredible tournament. Randolph goes from the first round through the number 22 team, Butler, through the number six team in one of the powerhouses in the state, Montville, through number 14, Mendham, through number the number two seed, Mount Olive, and in the final, in a penalty shootout, defeats the number one team in the county and the perennial powerhouse, Del Barton. Number nine, Lester Martin. 
You cannot write a better script as these players receive their medals. And every player gets Hang the on. same award. There's Levy. You hear the response. <laughs> I have a feeling that's going to end up somewhere in the family's living room. Oh, it better. Right above the mantelpiece, if they even have a mantelpiece. I don't even know. Yeah, they get, get, get a mantelpiece. <laughs> Buy the mantelpiece just for that. Buy a mantelpiece and then save the clip of the PKs from, uh, from, this, from the YouTube uh, <laughs> video on demand that you can watch later when you get home. Because trust me, you'll want to watch this. And if you're watching oh, this yeah. now, and if you're watching this now, congratulations. This is currently being saved quite a few times to hard drives in Randolph, New Jersey. I can guarantee you that. And I don't know if they give out a Golden Gloves, but I think I have a feeling who might win that too. <laughs> what an incredible night here in Roxbury. What an incredible night in two inf in fantastic finals. Yeah, great. Chatham, your Mars County champion for the girls. Upset the one seed. Upset the number upset the number two seed, Westmore Central. Oh, number two seed, I'm sorry. And the number 11, Randolph Rams. 11. Knock off the number one seed, Del Barton. Yeah. And are your Mars County boys champions. And Levy is the MVP. Could it be any other way? Folks, that will do it from here at, Rant at Roxbury High School. For our producer and my color commentator, Sean Bretherick, this has been David Hassag and thank you, saying thank you so much for tuning in. And good night from Sukkasana. <laughs>